I'm always learning something new, and so I want to share these things with you as well. In a recent video, when I was testing the thermal performance of an MVME with a heat shield versus a motherboard heatsink, I wanted to show what difference those things would make to the temperature and the speed of the drive. One of the things that I encountered, though, was that the Samsung drive in question, the 9100 Pro NVMe SSD, was actually running slower than it should have been. Now, I'd tested that drive in a previous build that I'd done in a different system, and it was getting 14,000 megabytes a second read speed and similar write speeds as well, which is what it's advertised at, so that's what I was expecting. But in this new system, it was only getting 12,000 megabytes a second, now, I initially put this down to perhaps a motherboard setting, something that needed changing and tweaking, but it wasn't the purpose of the video. I wasn't looking to try and get the maximum speed out of it. I figured it was probably a hardware issue or something else that was holding it back. What I was trying to demonstrate was how if a drive got too hot, it might end up thermal throttling and the write speeds might drop. Since making that video, Asus got in touch with me to point out that it isn't actually the motherboard that's the problem. And I wasn't alluding that that was the case in the video anyway, but it was interesting because it turns out that it's actually Intel's Aralake platform, as in the Core Ultra CPUs, that are the issue here. That's why the drive wasn't running at the 14,000 megabytes a second read speed, but instead at the 12,000. Now, interestingly, an article has appeared which alludes to this and talks a bit about it. So I thought it was worth sharing and I'll leave a link to this in the description, but it basically talks about how this is a known issue. One outlet has tested multiple drives and discovered the same problem that I have. And it's not just a Zeus it's limited to, it's a variety of other ones as rock boards, for example, also show the same thing. And it is the newest platforms so the core cool ultra platforms, the Z890 boards that are having this issue. So this is interesting because the previous system that I ran the Samsung drive in was an AM5 platform with a 9800X3D CPU in it. So it was that system and it was PCIe Gen 5 compatible. So every day is a school day, learning new things all the time. It's pretty interesting. This is also interesting because the previous generation of Intel motherboards, the Z890 platform is the newest one, the Z790 before that with the 14th gen CPUs and 13th gen as well was capable of running PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSDs at that maximum speed of 14,000 megabytes per second, just over there as well. So the newer system from Intel is worse. Now this also comes with some other bad news for Intel, which came at the launch of the Core Ultra processors in that they just weren't doing as well as Intel's own previous CPUs. Now I did videos a while ago on this and other people have covered it quite a bit as well, but essentially, the Core Ultra CPUs don't perform as well. Even the most expensive Core Ultra 9 285K doesn't perform as well as the i9 14900K of the previous generation. However, this was known to be the case anyway because Intel was dialing back some of the things in order to ensure long-term stability of the CPU and also the design is different as well, so some other things to it. Now, unfortunately, it also meant that it wasn't competing very well in gaming versus AMD's offering of the 9800X3D. But Intel since released 200S Boost, which is meant to improve things. And there's also another thing called IPO, which is coming later on and is available in China at the moment, which is also improving things. So there are some changes coming to the Core Ultra lineup, which is going to improve things. However, the point of this video is that if you want to get a Gen 5 drive that runs at some insane speed, like 14,000 megabytes a second, then Z890 is not for you because it's just not going to work at a maximum speed there. I recommend reading the article in the description, but essentially it's down to a bandwidth issue and the design of it. It just can't do it. It's restricted and it's part of that platform that's the issue. So it's pretty interesting. So what I maybe thought was a problem with the hardware wasn't related to the motherboard. It was indeed just another Intel problem, which is less than ideal. However, I would recommend watching that other video I'm talking about as well. I'll leave that in the description if you're not seen it already. Essentially, I showed the NVMEs especially Gen 5s with their own built-in heat shields, might not be as good as the one on your motherboard. The one I tested was an Asus Tough motherboard with a really thick, tall heat shield on it that did a better job of cooling the non-heatsink version of the MVME SSD than the one that came pre-installed. So there's two versions of the 9100 Pro that you can buy, and the one without the heat shield is better if your motherboard has a good heatsink in order to cope with it. 
and that will then ensure the drives running at the better speeds and gets better results because with those gen 5 drives they run really hot and when they get too hot so then the thermal throttle will slow right down so you need to make sure you've got good cooling in your system but also that you're running the right hardware in the first place pretty interesting this has been the provoke prawn thanks for watching You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.